What is going on everyone? This is Jacob Amrell here. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to ensure that your back tests are accurate. One of the core components of building automated trading systems is back testing, where you take a strategy and you test it on a set of data. With that being said, back testing isn't the holy grail. It's not the one all be all. You can have mediocre or bad back tests, but good real-time performance. However, it's one of the core components of building great trading systems. The goal with a back test is to try and mimic the real-time market results as closely as possible and see how it would perform in different market conditions in the past or with random data. Now, if your settings or your parameters are not accurate and you're getting better results than you should be, that's a major issue, right? Your back test should be as critical as possible. You're trying to destroy your strategy, uh, kick it to the ground, and if it still survives from the back test, then that's a really good sign you have a really good strategy. Bad back tests and inaccurate back tests can lead to potentially you losing money with your strategies because you didn't take the correct steps. So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you three major tips on how to ensure your back tests are accurate. The first tip to ensure your back test is accurate is to include commissions. Usually when you make a trade on any market, you're paying some type of commission. For example, I trade futures with interactive brokers and usually I'm paying about $1.25 to $1.50 uh, for buying and selling one contract. So when I run my back test, I include that. With every back test trade, it includes that commission and deducts it from my net profit, right? Because that's, that's, that's what happens, right? Now, if you trade, say, options um, or stocks, stocks, you may have no commissions. Um, options, it may be different, but you need to include your commissions in your backtest results. I use NinjaTrader to backtest my strategies and they have a commission template and the ability to include commissions. So I set that template up, I match it exactly what I pay for with interactive brokers and in my backtest results, it includes the commissions, how much that is, and obviously deducts it from my net profit, right? That ensures that my back test is one step closer to being accurate because it includes those commissions. So once again, tip number one, include commissions in your back test. It's very simple, very easy to do, but a lot of people don't do it and need to ensure that they do so their back tests are, are accurate. Tip number two to ensuring your back test is accurate is slippage, or also known as spread. When you submit a trade on the market, you're never getting the best price. You know, say an asset is trading at $100 and the spread is $1 and you go to submit an order, you're probably gonna get filled at $101, right? So there's a $1 slippage or $1 spread. So when you back test, right, you need to factor that in into each trade because you might not get filled at the best price, okay? So the, the question is, you know, what value do I use? What slippage or spread should I use? right? And you kind of have to research that on your own. So for example, with equity index futures, like the ES or NQ, I found out there's usually a one tick slippage, right? Meaning that the, the spread between the bid and the ask is usually about one. So if ES is trading at 4,000, for example, um, there's usually a, a one tick slippage and I'll probably get filled at 4,000.25 because the tick size is 0 0.25. So I found that out from, you know, my own trades, right? but it may be different for other assets, right? Say you're trading options on SPY, you might have a four or five tick slippage, right? Where the options contract is trading at $9 and you go to submit a market order and you get filled at $9.05, for example. So you need to kind of research that and actually try submitting orders and seeing what the spread is for that asset and then include that in your back test. Once again, I use NinjaTrader to do my back test and they have a slippage parameter and I will fill the correct value for whatever asset is in there, right? So if I'm back testing on ES on S&P 500 futures, I'll put a value of one in there. If I'm trading silver futures, I'll put a value of two in there because I found on average, there's about a two tick slippage with silver futures, right? So that slippage parameter um, will greatly affect your back test results because if that value is zero, that means you're getting filled at the best price each time and your back test will reflect that. But you'll notice when you put the slippage in there, say one or two, your back test results won't be as good because your orders will be filled at a worse price um, and thus you know your, your profit could be reduced or even turn negative if you're making a lot of trades okay so tip number two include slippage on your back test and make sure the value is accurate if you're not sure what your slippage should be submit a market order in real time on whatever exchange or asset you're trading on and see the difference between the bid and ask the spread right and use that 
as your slippage, right? That's the best way to find it out for an asset. Tip number three and the final tip to ensure that your back test is accurate is using high order fill resolution, okay? So what is high order fill resolution? When you submit a order to an asset and say you have a profit target and stop loss, right? The order in which that bar is built, meaning that say it's a green candle, right? The order in which it opened and closed is really important because it would it's gonna tell you when your profit target or stop loss is filled in that bar, right? So say you're trading on, on daily bars, right? And your profit target gets hit in your back test, but in reality, your stop loss would actually got to hit, hit first because the order in which that bar was built is crucial. So what you need to do in your back testing engine, whatever you're using, you need to enable that setting, okay? So with NinjaTrader, it's called high order fill resolution. And what it does is it adds a second data series to your primary data series and basically is aware of how that bar was built in the exact order. So if you're trading on daily bars, it's really important because in the day it can be very volatile and it can open and close in one direction, but in between that time frame, say between 9.30 and 4, the direction is really important because you need to know if your stop loss was would have been hit first or your profit target because that can massively affect your back test results, right? Say you run a back test with no high order fill resolution and it always hits your profit target and your results are amazing. You're like, awesome, let's run this live. And you go to run it live and it starts hitting stop losses before your profit target. That's gonna greatly affect your profit and loss statement, right? So you need to know the order in which that bar is built. And once again, with NinjaTrader, you use high order fill resolution. In other platforms, it might be something else. I believe in TradeStation, it's intra, intra bar granularity or something like that. But it's very crucial to know the order in which your bar was built, meaning when did it open and the order in which it closed. So you need to, so, so you'll be able to find out if your profit target or stop loss was hit first, right? Um, so once again, use high order fill resolution. And this can greatly affect your back testing results and really open your eyes and, and make it more accurate to what, what happened in real time. So let's just summarize the three tips to make your back testing more accurate. Tip number one is to include commissions in your trades. Tip number two is to include slippage in your trades. And tip number three is to use high order fill resolution. I hope you found value in this video and I hope that this helps your back testing and make it more accurate to real time. We'll see you next week. Have a good one, guys.